So, Kal Kadosh, I wanted to share with you a very interesting idea that I think is actually probably something that people don't think about. We speak about Tzara'at. This week's parasha is Tazriya and the Mitzura. Tazriya and Tahara. And in the parasha, we're going to speak about that Tzara'a, Asher Bo Hanega, Begadav Yufrumim, Verosho Yefarua, so this is the parasha of Tzarat. We're talking about the person that has leprosy. His clothing are going to be torn. His head is going to be uh, very long. He's going to have a long hair. And he's going to call out Tameh Tameh, meaning that he cannot become close to people. He has to call out very loud. Ah, I'm Tameh, I'm Tameh. The Sefer Likutean Sheshem asks, where else in the entire Torah do you see where somebody is obligated to embarrass themselves? Meaning here, right, if the Torah is so careful and cautious about kvoda briot, not embarrassing other people, it pushes off a negative commandment of the Torah. If they kill a person, they have to bury him the same day. Uh, the Gemara even brings out that the wood that they use to, to kill him on, meaning that, you know, when they hang him up, they would have to bury that as well. We know by the animals that, for example, the animal of Bilam, the Hamor of Bilam, had to die in order that it shouldn't be an embarrassment for Bilam. If we see so much, right, that a person that comes, we don't want to embarrass them. And that's even on a dead guy. I mean, they already killed him. He was Chayav Mitat Beddin. He was going to be a capital punishment. We killed him. And still we're not going to embarrass him. So what's the explanation over here? We're coming and we're saying that he's explaining to everyone his sin that he's calling out, that he's Tameh? Like, what's going on exactly? And it's even more that, again, if it's on the dead people, so all the more so if the person's alive. And what does it help now that he's calling out that he's Tameh and that he has to go completely outside, he has to do solitary confinement? Like, a lot of these things, you're thinking about it and you're saying to yourself, there's just something that's not right here. Like, well, what, what's the explanation? So, there's a Rachayim HaKadosh. And Orachayim HaKadosh comes and he says something incredible. This Orachayim is actually the beginning of Parashat Mitzorah. So usually they're together, Tazriya Mitzorah. But this week, it's this year, it's going to be next week. Okay? And it says over here like this, Liot she'atzarat kefi teva t'chunato t'itave mi'ipshut v'zihum aguf v'tigbor et amara she'tigabar ba'adam ve'oseh roshem v'saro. He comes and he says this, if you wanted to explain tzara'at, how would you explain it? He says, if you naturally want to explain it, so therefore you're going to come and you're going to say that it's from the extras, from excessive things that you have in your body, but it's usually because of like rottenness and it has an effect on the skin. So this comes, whether it's going to be from itzavon, from, for example, the person's uh, down, right? Or tzara'at alev, that he feels depressed and he doesn't feel good about himself, right? Now, what is the refuah? So the, the common, if you're going to say, if you want to look for a cure against Sadat, what are you going to tell me? It has to be that it's going to make you happy. Things that make you happy, things that make you... Now, he says, when the Sadat comes to the person, you would have thought that any holy TV, which is coming, meaning any natural sickness that comes to the human being, right? It could happen. But here it's because of Lashonana. So therefore, it doesn't make sense. How could it be that he comes and he tells us, now you have to close yourself off, your clothing has to be torn, your hair has to be long, you have to start calling out Tameh. It's the exact opposite of what you need to do to get cured. The exact opposite. Meaning if you want to be, if somebody's down, depressed, what do you have to do? So let's uh, start singing. We'll bring a breast of truck. We'll start dancing in the streets. We'll start doing these things. Well, well that's, that's, uh, that's how to get him out of it. He's got this depression. He's got this. Okay, do that. But he says here, it's the exact opposite. How does it make sense? And still, when he's going to start doing Teshuvah in his mind and confessing, so then all of a sudden, HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals the Nega Eteno, and then when he does Teshuvah, he's going to see that all of a sudden it changes. So he says, that's the Pshat, Zot Torah Tametzorah. Zot Torah Tametzorah means that Torah Tamotzi Shemra, Right? And therefore, it's actually going to be against the person to come and to enlighten our eyes. That even though it's against the sickness, when he comes and he purifies himself, he's going to become 100% pure. 
And now we have to understand, okay, fine. But why is it like that? Why is it that the Torah made it in such a fashion that the only way HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to come and he's going to make us become cured is to do the exact opposite of what your logic tells you to cure yourself. Meaning, one more time, you have cause and effect. A person comes and they're overweight. Why? They were eating too much. What are you going to tell them? Go on a diet. But you're not going to come and tell them, you know what? Eat more and then you're going to lose weight. Doesn't make sense. What's going on? You're doing the exact opposite. But that's what we're doing every year. We're coming, we're telling you why did, if naturally I wanted to explain the sickness, what am I going to say? It's because of the, you know, a person was down and a person, and what do you do? And it came and it had an effect on the skin. So now you, you should make yourself happy. It says the Torah, do the exact opposite. Close yourself off, tear your clothing. Have What's going on? Start calling out that you're Tameh. What makes it? Says that's exactly what's happening. So in order to actually understand this, we have to understand that this is actually to do with bitachon. And bitachon is not midat chasidut. It's not that if you want, you could believe in Hashem or not. It's bitachon is be'emet, that's the halacha. And when a person does not have bitachon in Hashem, he's like running after whether it's going to be the horses and everything for his parnasa, right? And the, the same thing that's going to happen right now with the Lashon Ara and everything else as well. Just like the Chazunish, uh, uh, he has a sefer called Emunah Bitachon. And he explains emuna is the halakha and bitachon is the ma'aseh. Meaning, first things first, you have to believe in Hashem. That's emuna. The bitachon is the ma'aseh, is how you put it into practice. Meaning, a lot of people, they could believe in Hashem. But the question is, do they put it into practice? So that's like somebody that's coming and learning in Chot Filin or Shabbat, but he doesn't actually mekayim otam ma'aseh. That's the same thing with bitachon and ma'aseh. Right? Emunah and bitachon, the exact same way. So he comes and he says like this. He says, it's not just enough to believe in Hashem. You have to actually understand that whether we're talking about ka'as, whether it's talking about anger, whether it's talking about revenge, right? Whether it's talking about, right? Whether it's talking about Lashon Ra, the Chilut, all those things, what's going to happen is, is that it's going to be Torat Shemra. That's the Torat HaMitzorah. Torat Shemra. Which means that it's going to be kashemi lashonara. It's even worse. Remember, mutsi shemra is on the false. Lashonara is when it's true. So he comes and he says, right? He says, this is what the Torah is coming to teach you. That when a person is going to be mutsi shemra, he has to realize that what's he doing? What's he trying to do exactly? He's afraid. So usually when a person does that is because somebody did something bad to you. Meaning somebody came and they spoke negative about you or they did a whole bunch of bad things to you. So therefore the Torah is coming down to the Shoresh, going down to the roots and saying, one second, since somebody did something to you, what do you want to do? You want to go back and get them back, right? And therefore, how are you going to get them back? He comes and he says, you want to speak something bad. He comes and he says, don't do that. Why? Because if you have the Bitachon and Hashem, nothing's going to make a difference. Nothing will actually change. And that's why what we're trying to show you is is that when we're speaking about the pasuk of diba, of speaking negatively, and everything that we're talking about, in order to come, and in order to cure such a person, right? He comes and he says, the only way to cure him is, is to realize and to let him know, you're lacking bitachon nashem. And he says, now what's going to be the proof? I'm going to take something that you're going to see, which is the natural cure, and I'm going to do the exact opposite. And I'm going to do the exact opposite to show you that when you do that, and you're going to do the exact opposite of the regular cure, meaning how are you going to cure the mitzvah? I told you, you should have, leave it open. You should have music. You should, you know, you should be out. I come and I enclose you. If you have something that's uh, already starting to get rotten, and then you come and you cover it, what happens? It becomes even more rotten, right? Right away, leave it in open air. You're not going to come and start uh, enclosing it even more, right? Why? It's going to become even worse. But here, that's what you're doing. You're coming and you're taking this person that has been, boom, and you put him, what's going on? But that's in essence what the Torah is teaching us. The Torah wanted to show that I'm going to show you that has nothing to do with the common nature of the sickness. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to do the exact opposite. And when you do it and you're going to do Teshuvah, you're going to become healed. The exact opposite of what you would have thought. To show you to have bitachon and Hashem. So even though somebody is going to come and he's going to do something negative against you, it doesn't matter. 
you don't have to worry about it. Right? Why? Because the Kadosh Baruch Hu is showing you the entire concept of right, the Midah Kenega Midah, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is showing you how a person has to behave. And with this, now we actually understand the concept of Lotikom Velotitor. You're not allowed to take revenge. You're not allowed to hold a grudge. You're not allowed to hate your brother in your heart. You have to love your brother as yourself. If you see that your enemy has, uh, you know, his animal has to unload, you have to unload it. You have to help him load the animal. All these mitzvot, it doesn't even make sense. We're not talking about stam that somebody hates somebody else for no reason. We're talking about obviously that somebody actually did bad to you. And they did something wrong. And just like by Yosef at Sadiq and the brothers that they came in and sold him. Or David Melech that Shimi bin Gira came and he, and he cursed him out. But they didn't pay them back negatively. Why? Because if the person has the true emunan bitachon, that everything comes from a Kadosh Baruch Hu, you don't have to worry. Don't worry about it. It's all part of the master plan. And therefore, you continue. As if nothing happened. You have a mitzvah. How does the Torah tell you that? The guy just came and he stabbed you in the back. How He comes and he does something else. Like, Love him like yourself. Right? You have to help him unload. Help him load. That's why the entire Torah is based upon Do you know the last of the Ten Commandments, usually when you finish off, the finishing touch is what actually encompasses everything. And therefore the Lotachmod is actually Bemet, the last of the Ten Commandments because it's actually coming and telling us that a person his entire life has to understand that everything, whether it's going to be not being stingy with other people, whether it's going to be the Tavot, whether it's going to be Kin'ah, that the, everything, the jealousy, everything that a person's going to have, when you hear it, you have to be happy. Why? Because even though by nature you would say to yourself, I'm not happy. Well, my friend became the billionaire and I'm still the regular Joe Shmo. I'm not happy. But he says, yes. Why? Because if we have the Bitachon in Hashem, that really, not only the Munah that Hashem is, is involved, but we have the Bitachon in Hashem. So therefore, what happens? Bemet, everything becomes much easier. Why in the world are you going to start the uh, Why are you going to start being jealous of other people? Why are you going to come and start doing bad? Even if they did bad to you, what does it matter? It doesn't matter. And therefore, we're going to say, okay, fine, but listen, maybe you can't control yourself. The Gaon Mavim that comes and he says in his letter that Yom Moto Tzarich Adam Litiaser, a person has to suffer his entire life. And not we're talking about now with the fastings and of self-afflictions, but with his mouth. And this is the Teshuvah, the Derech Chaim Tuchom Musar. What does that mean? Any single moment that a person controls his mouth, he's going to be Zocher to have Ora Ganuz. He's going to have this incredible light that not even a Malach will be able to actually say. And that's why it says, Shomer people should know. If a person watches his mouth, whether it's from too much eating, will show on his tongue from speaking badly. Shomer Misarot Nafsho, you always watch your body from negative things. And that's why the Torah comes and tells us, you're not allowed to speak Lashon Ra. You're not allowed to speak negative things. You're not allowed to steal. You're not allowed to do all these things. Why? Because once a person realizes that he's Shalem with Bitachon, it doesn't exist anymore. Right? For him, it's like, what? Everything. You guys thought you were doing something wrong. Don't worry about it. Hashem knew that it was going to become good. So I don't have to worry about it. Now, the truth is, it's very easy for Yosef Tzadik to say this now. But he was saying it even when he was suffering. He was saying even when he was in jail. And the, the proof is because it's very difficult for a person to change, right, overnight. It means it was a constant work that throughout his entire life he was singing it to himself, saying, I know. It could be I don't understand, but I know that this is good for me. And I cannot understand why, but I know that it's good for me. And therefore, if a person comes and constantly they're singing that in their mind again and again and again throughout their entire lives, first of all, they're going to be calm. They're not going to be depressed because they don't see it, but they know that it's good. It's like you're going to a dentist and he comes and he starts saying, and it's causing you to bleed and it hurts. And but you know that it's good for you. Or a person goes through a surgery and it was hurting, right? And let's say they weren't able to put the epidural and he's just screaming, at, but he knows that they're saving his life. And even though it could be that it hurts, but he knows it. He doesn't see it. All he sees is that they're coming and they're cutting him up and they're doing all these things. And he doesn't even see it, but the majority of times it's even internal. He'll never even he'll be able to see it. But the concept is that when you know something, it changes everything. So here's the knowledge 
that you know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is always doing good to a person. And that's why, right, the Gemara actually says something very, very interesting. The Torah says, right, after everything, all these things, it says, Why Ani Hashem? You're not allowed to take vengeance, you're not allowed to take revenge, because you have to understand, I'm Hashem. And therefore, I was the one that told him to do it. And I was the one that's behind it. And I know that it's good. You're right. Which means the good guys will always be the good messengers. The bad guys will be the bad messengers. 100%. But that's between me and him. But for you, you have to understand that he's coming. And this is what he's supposed to be here for. And therefore, you have to accept it. The Gemara Masechet Yoma says that in the first Bet HaMikdash, right, they were Rashaim. But they put all their Bitachon on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And we have to understand what does that mean exactly? What's the ma'ala that he put the bitachon in Hashem? So the Gaon actually comes and he says, because the Rishonim were tznuim bifnim, meaning that they were very, very immodest on the inside. And therefore they put all their bitachon in Hashem. And there was no sinat chinam. In their hearts there was no sinat chinam. But they did have it all. So they had Avodah Sadash, Fichud Damim, The other ones in the second Bet it was the exact opposite. They had Torah and Maasim Tovim and everything. But there was sinat chinam in their hearts. And therefore, they went and they said, the Rishonim, the first Bet HaMikdash, that it was revealed their sins. So therefore, it was revealed their end. Meaning we knew that after 70 years, we were coming back. But after the second one, it wasn't there. And the Gaon also says, all the Averot and the Chataim, they come from Chemda, from Lota Hamod, from jealousy, from coveting, from being je- from wanting other things. Just like it says, Lota Hamod is kolel kol adibro vechol Torah kula. The istapkut, when a person is happy with what he has, that's the exact opposite. That's the yisod of the entire Torah kula. That's the gaon mivina. Remember those words. Meaning, if somebody wants to put the yisod of the entire Torah, we know that the Ten Commandments is one of the main foundations. But the last one, which is the tenth, is the main foundation of all the ten. Do not covet. Do not be jealous. And the opposite was the istapkut, which means that you're happy with what you have. That's the exact opposite. That is what actually is the, the yisod of the entire Torah. So he says over here like this, somebody that has such a strong bitachon, even if he does averot chamurot, he's better than somebody that does not have bitachon. Because then he's going to come through kina and sina, and even though they're learning Torah and doing giminut chasadim, right? It's only just to make Hashem. It's not the real Torah and giminut chasadim. And therefore now he comes and he says, now the gaon mivina, we put them both together. The first gaon to do with the bait rishon and bait shani, and the second gaon, the exact thing, they were putting them together. The first Bet HaMikdash, they put their bitachon on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which means their insides were good. And they, because they had a good, good bitachon on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They had a strong bitachon. Now, even though they did Averot, okay, that's external. Externally, they do Averot, but the inside is going to be good. And therefore, the, the Gaon comes and he says that, that a person that has midata bitachon, even if he's going to do Averot, he's still better than a person that does not have bitachon. And that's why the first Bet HaMikdash, after the 70 years, they were brought back. Right from Babel, they were brought back and they had the second Bet Amidash going to be built. But in the second Bet Amidash, since it was Sinat Chinam, which is going to be hatred that was in their hearts, and therefore he comes and he says, and the Shorish comes that they're lacking in the Munam Bitachon and Hashem, and that's why there's Kinah and Sina, hatred, jealousy, and all the other Avirot and everything. This is much worse than the other Avirot Hamurot. Because once it's in the inside, the inside is all Mekulkal. Meaning like this if you have somebody that on the inside is good and just on the outside, peel it. You have sometimes a banana, you have a, a peel or something, you peel it and now it's good because the inside is good. So it's a good, but if you're going to have the, the inside is bad. So no matter how good the outside is from the inside, there's nothing left. It's like a person that lo leno bar minan, he's got the machala. The, the outside, he could look perfect. But if the inside, it's all becoming rotten and everything, there's nothing what to do anymore. He's completely lost. And therefore the rabbis come and they say, that was the difference between Bait Rishon and Bait Shani. The concept of the tzarat was coming to teach you, you have to do the exact opposite of nature to show you put your bitachon on Hashem. Don't speak Lashon Ra, Motzi Shem Ra. Don't try to get back at the people when they do to you. Don't try to, you have to understand everything comes from Hashem and nothing will change. And therefore you do what you need to do and you will continue serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the proper way as always. Shabbat Shalom.